The overall structure of an ELF file is like this. Uh, at the beginning there's an ELF header, and then in the middle, it doesn't actually have to be in the middle, but we usually think of it as this order, and it's a typical order, uh, is the main content. And this main content is broken up into sections that I've drawn in blue boxes. The sections, meanwhile, are grouped together into segments. So these are technical words, segments, and sections. The segments are the runtime view of the information. So for runtime to actually run the program, you need many of the same bytes and much of the same information, but maybe less needs to be done with it than in the blue parts, where you're thinking of it at a finer granularity, using it for linking and, and uh, other kinds of non-running uh, non tasks. So the same bits in the middle, but we have different headers. You know, The main header tells us where to find the program headers, that's the runtime view, and the section headers, that is the linking view. Right, but those uh, two different views overlap in the content of the file. And in particular, um, the two things can be separate. They, they don't always have to be there. An object file will not have a running view, an execution view, because you can't run an object file. You have to link it with other things. So in an object file, typically the program header is empty, and we just care about looking at different sections. And what you see here is that each section has a name that's indicated in the section header, and these names are kind of like the tags of XML. You know, they have some meaning based on uh, how the self file is being used, uh, and yet they're all pretty standard, actually. .text will turn out to be the machine code on pretty much all uses of ELF files. On the other hand, if you just have an executable, um, then you're not going to link it anymore, necessarily, as long as no dynamic libraries are involved. So you could imagine just having the program headers um, and only the segment view, and ha have lost information about the finer-grained segment view of things. This doesn't actually happen in practice anymore, and so usually an ELF, ELF file as an executable have both program headers and section headers. The same for a shared library, whereas object files really are just missing the segments or the program headers view. Segments uh, have types associated with them. So there's a handful of types. I've shown some of the most common ones, uh, and these types are again kind of like tags. They're defined by the operating system how it's going to use the ELF file. So a PT load segment means this is a part of the file that should be put into memory, like all of the machine code that needs to run, or initialized arrays that need to be set up a particular way. Dynamic is going to be a section that's needed at runtime to perform dynamic linking, and interp is similarly connected to that. Interp says here's the program that knows how to do the dynamic linking. Uh, and TLS, just as another example, is thread local storage information that uh, an operating system might need to set up threads properly to get a program running. Uh, all of these constants, by the way, are defined um, in a system header file called elf.h. Um, so we'll be referring to bits and pieces of elf all the way through today. So that's the segment, or the runtime view of things. Sections, as I mentioned before, uh, they have names. And each section also has a kind of type, which is you can think of as a super type that just describes roughly how the, the bytes are being used. But typically we ignore that, especially for our purposes, and just pay attention to the names, like text, BSS, and data, and so on. And I've listed some of the most common names here. I did mention before text corresponds to the machine code. Uh, so it's a terrible name for machine code, but that's a historical name. Um, the text section has the implementations of functions and so on. The only name worse than text is BSS, uh, and that corresponds to global variables that you've declared in your program but haven't initialized, and so they get the initial value zero. And if you have, say, an array of 100 elements and they're all supposed to be zeros, there's no need to store 100 zeros in your file. Uh, BSS just describes the space that will be needed for that. On the other hand, if you have an array of 100 numbers and there's specific numbers that you've declared, then those specific numbers have to be saved. So those will be in the data segment. RO data segment is similar to the data segment, but it's data where um, you may have some initialization, but it's read-only at runtime. So read-only data that's all zeros would not be very interesting. Normally that's going to be initialized data that's read-only. And it's put in a separate section so that it can perhaps be shared among different processes that are all running the same program. The symbol table is going to have uh, information about functions and variables with their names. And, um, but the symbol table is not actually going to have the names in it. It's going to have offsets into the string table to actually provide the names. Uh, 
That way a symbol table can be a simple array of fixed size records while the string table takes care of the variable size strings. And it turns out these names for sections, well all those names are in their own section as well. The sh str tab section, which is the section header string table. So the actual string uh, .bss will show up in this section, as well as the actual string .shsdr tab.